of you lovely people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com. And I don't know about you, but I sure am old enough to remember video games being much more simple affairs back in the day. The heroes were all plucky little tykes who triumphed over evil and then lived their fairy tale endings as the sun set on their idyllic lands. Nowadays, though, it's all so dark and edgy and there's enough grit in them to pave a goddamn road. Death, betrayal, insanity, depression all now make up the backbone of gaming as a medium for the most part. And even when things do go well for our heroes, there might actually be something much more disturbing going on in the background, which paints the whole narrative in a darker shade. So let's wipe off that rose tint that smothers happy endings and instead talk about the looming clouds threatening to rain on the parade. I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game endings with disturbing implications you totally missed. Number 10. Vanquish Oh me, oh my, it's time for me to talk about one of my favourite games, and say it with me kids, that I owned on my Xbox. Yes, I am still doing that psych out thing. Anyway, however, as much as I'm keen to slip and slide all over Vanquish's gorgeous aesthetics, its incredibly rewarding arcade action gameplay, and the fact that there's a dedicated smoke cigarette button, I have to admit that the plot did leave a fair few icebergs floating in the water after the game wrapped up. For those of you not in the know, Sam, our hero, is on a mission to stop some evil Russians from taking over a solar station and them using that cheeky sun energy to wipe out US cities, which is pretty standard B-movie guff, right? Well, things get pretty strange when government coups come into play, presenting evidence that the US president is actually behind the Russian takeover and wants to use this as a chance to wage a war and boost the economy. Okay, okay, so that's a little bit more complex, but I'm still following it so far, yet things get really mental when it turns out that the final boss in this game, these two slave suits, are controlled by the main Russian bad guy who escapes, and the US president then commits suicide. Right, so while our closing shots are of Sam being reunited with his team and being all really happy happy, what we've actually just been shown is that a terrorist is still on the loose and the US is now without a leader and quite potentially is about to be thrown into economic meltdown. Brilliant. Yet the game plays it off like we shouldn't worry about it because you saved the day! Number 9. Warhammer Space Marine Okay, so I don't know if you're aware, but I love Warhammer. I've been playing for many a year and love me some heresy with my faves, the Emperor's Children and those sexy demonettes. However, because I play these traitors to the Imperium, I know all too well that things don't usually end up going smoothly for anyone who encounters the warp and its perils. If this is all sounding like absolute gubbins to you, then let me try to break it down using the end of the surprisingly brilliant game Warhammer Space Marine. You take up the big stompy mantle of Captain Titus, who has to stem an invasion of orcs and chaos the only way he knows how, by shooting it very hard. So with all of that done and dusted and the forge world that you're on saved, all seems well, right? Well, wrong, because the ending shows Titus being taken in for Inquisition, which is basically like the Spanish Inquisition and the Gestapo all rolled into one when it comes to their methods of extracting information. They believe him to have been corrupted by evil, and the game ends on this bleak note. Yet it's not the worst thing about this, as the planet is now under Inquisition, which is the worst thing that could ever happen, as the Inquisitors are very trigger-happy when it comes to wiping entire planets out if there's so much as a whiff of heresy. So yes, while the day is saved at Titus's expense, this Forge world might not live to see another. Number 8. Super Mario Bros. Everything is murder. Now listen, I could go on and tell you that Mario is a murderer and just point to the Koopa kids who he makes into Koopa Super as evidence of this, but when you compare it to this next fact, these atrocities look like a walk in the park with the Pope. So you know when you're screaming through a level on a quest to help Princess Toadstool free herself from the grips of Big Bad Bowser, and you know how you've been smashing a load of blocks along the way? Well, it turns out, thanks to page 4 on the Super Mario Bros. instruction manual, that each and every one of these blocks used to be a citizen of the kingdom. Well, no wonder sometimes they've got coins inside of them, as you're actually just mugging them in addition to murdering them. So the next time that you look at Peach and Mario having a jolly at the end of the game, just remember that Mario's got more than her pie on his fingers, as they're likely now dripping with blood. Number 7. Metal Gear Solid 2 
After the giant Arsenal gear crashes into New York City and Raiden and Solidus Snake are forced to fight one another, actually read that as eventually after about 30 minutes of straight dialogue do they actually fight each other, Raiden spanks Stiffy Snake and is then reunited with his girlfriend Rose, who it turns out is pregnant with his kid. How adorable, right? It couldn't be more wholesome. Well, half of New York has just been pasted, an official ex-member of office has just been killed, and now the world has been thrown into endless proxy wars because of nanobots. It's complicated, but yeah, things aren't great. However, just focusing on New York, it's likely that this entire area will become a dead zone for the next decade, and thousands, if not millions of people, will have been displaced or have no jobs to turn up to. But who cares about this, right? Because Rose is pregnant! Oh god, actually just thinking about it, that kid might struggle in the job market if things don't improve. Number 6. Medal of Honor Warfighter AWOL so, I'm not sure if you remember, but Warfighter caused quite serious controversy when it was released. Not only did the Naval Special Warfare Group that was working with EA at the time as consultants find out that it was actually releasing classified information and had to be disciplined, but it also turned out that their Horrors of War ending, while attempting to be deep and thought-provoking, just provoked a lot of people full stop. All throughout the game, you're shown the squad members to be adrenaline junkie star warhounds who just love a scrap as much as they love their country. So when the game offers you an ending where you can turn your back on your squad and return home to your family, it's a little out of left field, as is the implications of choosing such an ending as well, as if you go AWOL, you could end up in military prison for desertion. And trust me, desertion isn't going to look great on your CV either, so helping to provide for your family just got a hell of a lot harder. Number 5. Uncharted 2 – Shambhala Destroyed Okay, so what would you do if you found the Tree of Life? Would you bottle the sap in order to sell it to the highest bidder, use it yourself, or even just a bit of both? Well, you know what, it doesn't matter, because thanks to second worst archaeologist ever, Nathan Drake, you won't have the option because he's gone and bungled the whole thing, and now the priceless resource has been destroyed. Now, I have to admit, he is not totally to blame, seeing as there are some nasty mercenary types that are trying to use the sap for military purposes, but while this game paints Nathan's victory and his subsequent smooch with Elena as the backdrop to a charming and romantic ending, the fact remains, and thanks to this goon, that the world has once more lost out on a society-altering discovery. And to be honest, it's even worse when you consider that the entirety of Shambhala now lies in ruins thanks to his actions, along with the Guardians who'd lived there for far longer than he'd been around. Number 4. Streets of Rage – Long Live the King now, normally, you'd not look at a beat-em-up like Streets of Rage and immediately think that there's a deep narrative, or any narrative at all, but this classic title did actually manage to contain two endings, one of which is nice and the other, well, it's rather bleak. The first ending comes from you beating the absolute piss out of the big boss and then celebrating together watching the sun set on this bizarre city that was content to let three people do most of the works while a sole cop car shot rockets out at intervals. I mean, standard affair, right? Well, that's where the second ending comes in, for if you and your friend decide to part ways, attempt to kill one another, and then have the survivor beat up the boss, you'll get the bad ending, which involves your character now sitting on the throne as the new boss. I mean, excellent, right? Well, maybe not, seeing as you've killed your partner, left a ton of destruction in your wake that is sure to act as a paper trail, and that gang that you're now in charge of? Well, there's not many left of them now thanks to you, is there? It's kind of like anyone being impressed that they've made your mum orgasm. It's an empty title which isn't anything to brag about. Seriously, she knocks knees at the thought of my little meat devil, so where's the challenge in that? Also, that's my one per list. Number 3. Free Freedom Fighters, the Russians are coming back. Hooray! We killed the Russians and stopped them from invading good old America, just like Hollywood always promised us we would. Go Wolverines and all that, slap on the disco music and grab a party ring, I don't know. Oh, wait a minute, what's that in the distance? Oh, even though we've driven back the Red Tide, it's just the start of a second, even more massive invasion. Brilliant. Yeah, that's the thing about Russia. There's a lot of people who live there, and a lot of people willing to fight sickle and hammer for President Putin. So while the game presents it as you beating back those nasty Ruskies in the name of cheeseburgers, freedom, and privatized healthcare, it seems very foolish to think that they will literally never be coming back to exact revenge, especially when they basically had America on the ropes. Now, it is true that the game was setting up a sequel, but as that game never came to light, we have to fill in the gaps, and those gaps aren't going to go so smoothly come the end of the credits, are they? Number 2. Halo 3 well, here we are. you finished the fight. Well, until the franchise attempted to come back again to milk that big tin of green soup dry, but now Master Chief has saved humanity from the onslaught of the Covenant and the Flood and can now rest easy. All is well that ends well, 
Right. Well, not exactly, because we heard that the war has actually claimed the lives of 23 billion people, and while I'm sure that there's still a ton of people left spread across all of the colonized planets, that number is going to have a significant impact on human economy. Hell, things might even be so bad that it sets farming and transport back and colonies that rely on supplies might just simply die out. Obviously, this is just speculation, but one has to imagine that things aren't all going to be rainbow rhythms just because a ceasefire is being called, right? And number one, Mass Effect 3. As much as I don't want to rip the bandage off this salty, salty wound, we must once more discuss the ending of Mass Effect 3. Now, ignoring the ire that this ending drew and the extended edition that was tacked on after the backlash, there is still one massive issue that the devs seem to have overlooked. Namely, what are all those ships who are now stranded in space thanks to the now broken Mass Effect relays going to do to survive? I mean, think about it. Now that the Alliance of Races has no way to travel back to central hubs and are left in isolated clusters, what resources do they have to make sure that they can A, repair the relays, and B, keep everyone fed? And remember, the different races eat different foods. You might be a Quarian who's stuck in a star cluster which literally has nothing you can eat. You might even see relationships destabilize as desperate choices are made to keep their own people fed and safe. Yet this game doesn't really seem to address this. Instead, it focuses on your recent victory over the Reapers. Now, to be fair, that is huge cause for celebration, but maybe just don't do it on the Volus fruit juice as that's gotta last us another six bloody months. And there we go, those were 10 video game endings with disturbing implications that you totally missed. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, as well as any other suggestions that you would have for a future list of the same name. Might do a commenter's edition, you don't know. But the one thing I do know is that I want to talk to you, my friend, about how you are doing. I hope you are well. Whatever you're getting up to today, hope that you succeed in it. And if you don't, you know what? That's okay, because we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to succeed in our society, and sometimes it's not about getting it right first time. You can learn from your mistakes, you can grow from it, you can actually find friends, family members, and support in general to help you get better at whatever you are doing in the future. Sometimes failure is actually a good thing. So just think on that, all right? And if you want to chat about this or anything else, you can follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.